Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm really excited to be at the Barangaroo Station Open Day. And if you don't know where Barangaroo is, then here's a map. So Barangaroo is one of seven new underground stations that have been built as part of the Sydney Metro City and Southwest Extension. And it's the first station on the south side of Sydney Harbour. This Open Day was on Sunday the 26th of November 2023 and hundreds of people waited eagerly to see Barangaroo Station for the very first time. And this included a special someone. Our walk to the entrance took us alongside this new street on the right, which is this one on the map. And once around the corner, you can see the escalator entrance straight ahead, and the lift pod on your right, which has two lifts, which I'll take a ride in a little later. The lift doors face the harbour, and have a large canopy above for weather protection. And the lift pod has curved glass sides on either end. These are to protect some of the lift elements, but also make it larger and more visible from a distance, and they look aesthetically pleasing as well. Now approaching the escalator entrance, which has a stainless steel structure with glass sides, and what appears to be long wooden strips for the ceiling, which is 4 metres high. I do like the red carpet treatment, that made us all feel like specially invited guests. So let's go down under, via one of these three escalators. One thing that I wasn't expecting was two sets of escalators to the concourse, and this first one is quite short compared to the one that follows. The escalator walls consist of white panels, but the terrazzo floor on this intermediate level is a taste of what's to come. And this intermediate level contains emergency exits from the back of house rooms, and the need for safe egress in the event of a fire or other emergency is the main reason for this intermediate level and the two banks of escalators. And this is the view back towards the entrance, and notice the natural sunlight coming down the escalators. Now taking the longer escalators that lead down to the concourse level below. The panels on the escalator walls change to a warmer creamy colour and these horizontal slats make it a little more interesting. And the top of these slats are at the same level as the concourse ceiling and that will become apparent in a moment. The two lifts from the entrance are on the other side of this wall on the left. And on the right, further slats appear on the escalator wall. And up above is the concourse ceiling and you can see its natural connection with the slats on the walls. These escalators are outside of the station box, which is on the other side of the opal gates on the left. You can now see into the main concourse area, with the two lifts that go down to the platforms taking centre stage. This is looking back up these three escalators, as they carry significant numbers of people for the very first time. So from the escalators, it's a short walk to the opal gates, which are switched off, so I won't be the first person to tap on at Barangaroo. And it was here that I met a couple of people from Sydney Metro, but not these people. So we've got Hugh Lawson, probably doesn't need an introduction. He's the project director for Sydney Metro City and Southwest. Yep. And next to him we have Claire, who is the delivery director for Barangaroo Station. And Claire revealed what lies behind this white wall. So what you're looking at here is the future southern entrance. Behind here is solid rock at the moment. This hoarding is protecting passengers and will allow the future construction behind there with zero impact to customers while the central Barangaroo development works through their master plan and construction program. And this means that when Barangaroo station opens next year, the Barangaroo reserve entrance will be the only way into and out of this station until the central Barangaroo development is built. And this development will be on land that has been used to support the station construction, and this land will soon be relinquished. The current proposal is for a hotel, apartment building and a harbour park, along with a high street that will have bars, restaurants and cafes. And this would include the excavation and building of the southern station entrance. Now back in the concourse and looking towards the north end of the area that is outside of the opal gates, and the first piece of artwork is on these cylindrical columns, that contain these copper bands with Aboriginal words on them. Now I'm not going to attempt to pronounce these words, but if you know what they mean, please do share this in the comments below. And notice the designs around these words as well, that to me look like pieces of land surrounded by water. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. This same artwork appears on all four columns that are on the west side of the concourse. And just beyond the northernmost of these columns are the two lifts that go up to the lift pod that you saw earlier. On the other side of the opal gates are the two lifts that go down to the platforms, and behind these are the toilets. There are two escalators around to the left, and two further escalators over on the right. So this whole area, and we're what, about 16 metres below ground level now? When customers come in, they see all of this sandstone, 7,700 panels, 
and they were quarried in Gosford, I think. So they're Gosford sandstone. They're 50 mil thick panels of sandstone. They range in size from 600 millimetres in length to 900 millimetres in length, and they're all individually placed according to the design. So we've got Liam here. Liam works for Architectus. Yes, so Architectus were the delivery architects for this project. The design architects were Foster and Partners out of the UK. This beautiful sandstone on the wall is endemic to Sydney. Special features about it, it's a split face. So you get the big block and you cut it in half. And the reason you use the split face is it helps with the acoustic performance of the station box. So you can speech intelligibility for the speakers uh, in the station. Uh, and as well as it looks beautiful. And you get this randomness to it, which I think everyone loves. On the wall is our beautiful public art. Yeah, it's incredible when you have a look at it. Steel and copper really trying to link the station to some of the native trees that you see around the headland. So it's a piece of art called In Time We Shall. The concept of it links to the concept of trees being an enduring theme through nature, um, through all cultures, both um, European and indigenous, and the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. And some of those native trees grow within the heritage wall on Hickson Road. So I reckon this tree art gives a nod to these too. And the use of real sandstone also reflects this heritage wall that is almost directly above. This piece of artwork, In Time We Shall, is by Khaled Sabsavi. It really lifts the space down here and bring out the beautiful sandstone walls. They're incredible on their own, but with the art, I think it just creates a, another incredible feature. Khaled Sabsavi is Lebanese and migrated to Australia in 1977. He also created the artwork on the columns that you saw earlier. And prior to being an artist, he was a hip hop performer. Looking up, you can see the precast concrete super T beams that form the ceiling. And these support Hickson Road, which is now running directly above the station box. And back in May 2021, I filmed one of these super T beams as it was being craned into place. So if you haven't seen this video, it's now appearing on the top right, with a link in the description below as well. Okay, you're going to check out the toilets. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> No, they're definitely temporary. <laughs> yeah, so the toilets are not yet finished. Um, so I'll show you those when the station opens. One of the unique features here is because we're so close to the harbour, we're able to use seawater for the cooling system rather than the normal cooling towers you'd see at some of the other stations. So I think, Claire, that's, that's one of the real sustainability. So it's a key feature to our sustainability credentials. Um, it's similar to the system used at Sydney Opera House. Again, the proximity of the harbour offers us a unique opportunity here. I think you'll agree it's quite pleasant, even though it's hot outside today, it's pleasantly cool in here. It's about four times more efficient than using the air-cooled cooling systems and is a harbour heat exchange. So the warm water is returned to the harbour and we draw in cool water to keep the station cooled. All of our stations are heading towards six star green star ratings, all the new stations. So they're right up there at the top of the kind of sustainability, water efficiency, energy efficiency. That's a real aim for what we're building here. But Barangaroo, because of its unique location, like brilliant opportunity to go even further. Absolutely. It's amazing. Stuff that most people won't even think about. All of the engineering here, all of the hard work is in the service of a fantastic yeah. customer, passenger experience, and the rail service that they're going to get from here. The idea is that people come through the station and they don't think about all of that. They just see something incredible. They get on their train. The train is quick. It's safe. It's reliable. That's our end goal. So that's the concourse. We're now going to head down to the platforms. And this is via the northern set of escalators. The island platform is immediately visible below, with Platform 1 for Sydenham and ultimately Bankstown on the right, and Platform 2 for Talawong on the left. On this day, both escalators were operating in the down direction. Normally, it would be one down and one up. The configuration of the lifts and escalators is very similar to Waterloo, with the lifts in the centre and the escalators on either side. This helps spread passengers along the length of the entire platform. I've become a minor celebrity, especially at community open days, and there are always people wanting to say hello, which is really nice. Hello. Hi, I'm Caleb from Transport NSW Bus and Train Works. So now down on platform level, it all looks very much finished. I can see the next train displays, the signage is up, the seats are in. It all looks ready to go. The width of the platform is 10 metres, which is the same as Waterloo, and the length is 170 metres, and that's the same for all Sydney Metro platforms. 
The distinctive sandstone walls continue to be visible from the platform, with darker grey horizontal slats between these and the platform screen doors. The platform ceilings are of a similar design to the concourse ceiling that is above the lower bank of escalators from the entrance. But on the platform, the ceiling has some gaps. If you look up, you can see the beam supporting Hickson Road, the road sitting right above us, fully open all the way from the platform to the roof. You know, it does just create that sense of space down here. So the concourse ends where the escalators start, which means that from the northern and southern parts of the platform, you get these amazing views of the Super T beams high above. And it's the high ceiling that helps create that sense of space. So the terrazzo tiling's from Italy. It's two and a half thousand square meters of terrazzo tiling, either on platform or on the concourse level. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's also very practical and hard wearing. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Paul. It's a bit cold down here, isn't it? It's almost quite cold, isn't it? It's pretty um, cold. Pretty cold. Yeah. I'm going to agree with um, that. But what do you think of the station? I think it's a very, very beautiful station, especially from down here. It's flawless. Oh, it's definitely flawless. <laughs> I think I would agree with that. So you'll see a variety of different materials at the different stations. So each one's got a little bit of a unique look and feel, but they're all very practical and, you know, very attractive. And this also makes each station more recognisable when arriving on a train. And that's something you will certainly notice when this line opens next year. Standing here on platform, we're 25 metres below ground. The platform itself is long enough with the rooms at either end to fit in the Crown Casino building. Crown Casino is 271 metres long and you could fit that building lying along our platform and our room length here. The station box itself is 210 metres long and 20 metres wide. But when you add in the crossover cabin at the northern end, that makes it the same length as the Crown Casino. You've described this station a bit like an iceberg, Claire. Do you want to explain why? <laughs> Brangaroo to me is like an iceberg. If you look at the gross floor area of the station, around about 20% of the floor area is publicly accessible. So the beautiful spaces that you're seeing today, um, the remaining 80% of the station floor area is actually back of house equipment rooms, meal rooms, staff amenities, fan rooms, all the equipment that's needed to provide the power. Some of those equipment rooms sit actually above ground level at the other stations. They're the first few storeys above ground of some of the overstation developments. Here the intent is that you're going to come up into a park, right? So there's very little built above ground level deliberately here. Brangaroo is meant to have a, a very small presence at ground level, just enough for people to easily find their way to and from the station, but they're really coming up into a beautiful part of Sydney. So all those equipment rooms, as Claire said, they're actually hidden below ground here at Brangaroo. So quite different to stations like Gadigal or Martin Place, where uh, a lot of that's actually accommodated above ground level. So it really is like an iceberg, with just the escalator entrance and lift pod on the west side of Hickson Road, and a collection of service pods alongside the heritage wall on the east side, and I'll talk more about these later in this video. Okay, so I've got Sean here from Transport for Sydney Vlogs, and as we're down on the platform, we thought we'd talk about platform screen doors. So Sean, What's the benefit of platform screen doors? There's one obvious benefit, and that's the physical separation between the platform and the tracks. So you can feel comfortable with where you stand. If it's congested, then you won't have to worry about being pushed by other people. So they won't need to stand behind the yellow line. Another benefit is that trains can come in faster, so they can decelerate into the station faster and accelerate out of the station faster. Can you think of another benefit, Sean? One I can think of is in the air conditioning. So the air conditioning is contained within the stations. Thank you very much, Sean. If people want to find out more about uh, your channel, where would they go to find you? Uh, so if you just search Transport for Sydney Vlogs on the YouTube search bar, you'll be able to see it. And we'll make that appear up on the right. Let's do that again. And we'll make that appear up on the right somewhere now. There we are. Right. Somewhere here. <laughs> Thanks for that, Sean. These markings indicate the locations of the platform screen doors so that passengers know where to wait. Barangaroo Station has a large crossover cavern at the northern end so that trains can switch tracks in either direction when required. You can see the points indicator for this crossover through the platform screen doors on the left. Remember, it's not a signal for reasons that I explained in this video. The crossover cavern was essential for boring the tunnels and building the station, as Hugh and Claire now explain. Barangaroo was pretty unique in that we not only launched but also had some of the TBMs finishing their journey here. So Barangaroo cavern, the crossover cavern, was critical. That's where 
TBM Kathleen was launched from to tunnel under the harbour twice. So went under the harbour, brought out at Blues Point, brought back, tunnelled under the harbour again. But at the same time, we had the two TBMs coming up from Sydenham. So they tunnelled all the way from the Marrickville dive site at Sydenham, all the way through the CBD, through Martin Place, etc. They finished their journey at the south end of the Barangaroo box and were lifted out from there and removed from site. So some really amazing photos. You can see um, part of TBM Kathleen being brought in on the, this kind of massive like mobile piece of plant um, had to come in Hickson Road and down the shaft we used to have. We used to have a shaft just under the bridge in Hickson Road, the north shaft we called it. Uh, so we had masses of equipment coming down through there, squeezing its way into the crossover cavern and then launched from there under the harbour. The temporary northern shaft itself was actually then used as a access point for us to service the fit out of the tunnels and the station. So when we handed this station over to the Bessex Wattpack contractor in September 21, we fed the materials. The escalators that you've actually come down on today came down that northern shaft and then were craned yep. into place from it inside the station box. The shaft's now been finished, it's been backfilled. There were six and a half thousand cubes of concrete used to backfill that shaft. That's about three Olympic swimming pools. We used to have a whole range of sheds across the project, hiding all these access shafts and some of the ways we built it, but they're all gone now, they're all gone. But clever clogs here can reveal that there is still one left, and that's for Martin Place Station. But now it's been transferred to Sydney Metro West to assist with the construction of Hunter Street Station. What were some of the challenges around waterproofing, keeping the water out of this station? I mean, similar to Waterloo, this is a fully tanked structure. You can see when you're standing at the surface just how close we are to the edge of the harbour. You can see where the water level is in the harbour. That's the level of water pressure we need to deal with. So pretty much the entire station is below water level here. Same challenges of needing to stop the box actually lifting up and coming out of the ground. We've got to stop water coming in. So fully lined and tanked, multiple layers of waterproofing, pretty thick concrete walls here to keep the water out. Uh, we've just got to manage that future connection into the adjacent development. Um, but otherwise, at platform level here, the idea is to keep everyone as dry as possible. So that's enough geeky construction information for now, but there is more to come. But first, it's time for some vertical transport, and I have the perfect person to help me do that. So I've got Trey here. He's going to help me check out the lifts. And we'll start with the ones on the platform. Trey will be able to use this and all other city metro stations without assistance from station staff as the platforms have level boarding. Is this the first metro station you've been Th to? This is the second one so on the new line. Right, so you've been to Waterloo. Yeah, I've been to Waterloo. Great. Um, I'd be interested to know what the capacity of this is. Yeah. Um, 26 people. They are 26. So one, one person less than Waterloo. On this day, the platform lifts had protective covers inside, and that made them appear smaller. We continued through the opal gates to ride the lifts to street level. It's not probably working, Trey. Ah, uh, yeah. I think they're just open. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. Oh, okay. Now this is interesting. So we've got multiple levels here. So, um, do you know anything about B two when it opens? B two is not going to be for public. No. Okay. okay. These lifts had wooden boards protecting the sides, which again made them look smaller than they really are. We're not done yet, so back in the lift we go, and once inside, you get views of the heritage wall on Hickson Road, and the harbour on the other side. Now on our way back down to the concourse level. And for these lifts, the concourse doors are on the opposite side, so no need to turn around. So at Waterloo Station, Luke gave us some really geeky facts. Can you give us more geeky facts about Barangaroo than Luke did? I can definitely out-geek Luke for you. Um, so at Barangaroo, we've had 1.3 million person hours worked over the construction of the station. Uh, there's 180,000 concrete blocks that have been laid. I've actually laid two of them myself. There's been over 5,000 people who've contributed to physically building the station structure. 814 individual speakers, 123 cameras and 23 customer information display screens to tell you where your trains are arriving and help with the signage and navigation of the station. I think you definitely are geek Luke. Yay! <laughs> I then asked you about where all the electrical power comes from. So there are three key Osgrid feeds into the city and southwest section. 
So you've got Artarman, yep. which is close to the northern dive. That actually feeds straight down into the tunnels from yep. the Artarman site. Yep. Uh, then you've got a feed coming from Surrey Hills. It actually goes into the railway at Central and through the tunnels. The actual uh, substation, if you like, is uh, located at Waterloo. And okay. then you've got a feed from Osgrid at Campsie, and that comes up the corridor from Campsie to Sydenham and feeds in at the Southern Dive. So we've got a very resilient high voltage power network to support the operation of the railway. As you'd imagine, we yeah. want to make sure that pretty much whatever happens, we're exactly. going to be able to keep running the trains, you know, getting customers in and out in an emergency, whatever it might be. So a very highly specced and resilient power system. To power the trains, further substations convert the AC current to 1500 volts DC, which then feeds into the overhead rigid conductor system. These substations are generally at every second underground station, and there is one at Barangaroo. And keeping all the cables that go to and from this substation underground was not easy, as Claire now explains. The uniqueness of Barangaroo in terms of everything below ground and the way the electrical feeders have come in through the tunnels and come back up and the routing of that coming in, up, back down and around means that we're about 160 kilometres here or from here to the Hunter Valley. Now in November 2018, something was found during the excavation phase, as Hugh now explains. So yeah, we found a boat here, Brangaroo boat. It was actually the oldest boat built to a European design, but with native Australian timber, so an Australian built boat. Pretty unique, about 180 years old. So from the timbers estimated to have been built sometime at the end of the 1830s, early 1840s, and it was actually dumped and left at the edge of the harbour. And we found a load of the original harbour side features uh, when we were doing the excavation. But this boat was pretty unique because of its manufacture and where it had come from. It was a very practical working boat out on the harbour, taking people and materials around um, and came to the end of its life and was left there. So. That boat's then been through a really extensive conservation and preservation process. Uh, we've been working with Silent World Foundation and the Australian National Maritime Museum. The timbers have been fully preserved. The aim is that will then be reassembled and put on display at the Australian National Maritime Museum in due course. In terms of the heritage interpretation plan, on our surface plaza public domain works, the location where the boat was found has been marked out and that will be interpreted with metal bronze inlay into the paving so that we've recognised and recorded that as part of Brangaroo's heritage. The majority of those clips came from a fascinating Sydney Metro mini documentary video that explained the recovery and conservation of the Barangaroo boat. That's now appearing in the top right and is also linked to in the description below. This is Stan <laughs> and this is Sam. Sam, Stan. Now, they don't talk. But they are a lot of fun and appeared in hundreds of photos throughout the day. So as I mentioned earlier, the only visible structures at street level are the escalator and lift entrances and the service pods along Hickson Road. The remainder of the area west of Hickson Road will become a mix of parkland and pedestrian plazas, and this will have bicycle parking at various locations for 110 bikes. At the moment, this is still very much a construction site, so the focus of the next few months will be on completing this work. Now looking into this area from the escalator entrance, and the heritage interpretation to mark the location of the Barangaroo boat will be somewhere in this space. Now for the service pods that are in front of the heritage sandstone wall on Hickson Road, and these pods are the only other part of Barangaroo station that is visible from the street. These are numbered 1 to 9, with one being at the southern end of Hickson Road, and these pods house emergency exits, tunnel ventilation shafts, a fire control room and air inlets and outlets. The tunnel ventilation fans have a 20 year design life and are too large to be removed by the service lift. So instead, the attenuators can be removed so that the fans can be lifted out of the top of the pods and replaced with new ones. A design competition for the service pods took place and Atelier Luke Architects were awarded the contract to make them look more interesting and perhaps even beautiful. This is likely to involve brick cladding combined with vegetation planters, so we should see some greenery around these pods. Work continues to turn Hickson Road into an integrated transport corridor that will have a new wider footpath next to the service pods, then a separate bi-directional cycle lane, then two traffic lanes, and then another pedestrian path that leads into the station entry plaza. And between Hickson Road and the escalator and lift entrances, you can see some of the groundwork taking place for this plaza. There will be new bus stops close to the station entry plaza, along with a new pedestrian crossing just here. 
Hickson Road has been moved several times to enable Barangaroo Station to be built and it's now in its permanent location, which as mentioned earlier is directly over the station box. A huge thank you to Hugh and Claire from Sydney Metro for generously and enthusiastically sharing their knowledge and experience on camera, and to Liam from Architectus as well, and also to fellow YouTubers Shareth and Sean, and of course Trey for joining me in the lifts. And a big thanks to Jim for coming along with me and taking tons of additional footage that's been included in this video. And also thanks to Alex and Matthew for helping out with some of the filming too. So that's Barangaroo Station. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and please leave a comment or question below, and I'll do my best to answer any questions you may have. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and also consider joining me on Patreon. There's a link with further details below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.